Hi everyone. Today we are going to discuss a new topic that is complexometric titrations. So what is complexometric titrations? Complexometric titrations can be also named as kilometry. It is a form of volumetric analysis in which the formation of a colored complex is used to indicate the endpoint of the titration. So complexometric titration is also a volumetric analysis and the endpoint is indicated by the formation of a complex. So here we can see this is the reaction taking place in a complexometric titration that is a complex will be formed at the endpoint and we are going to find out the concentration of metal ion that is the metal ion is an analyte and the titrant is a ligand. So this complexometric titrations are particularly useful for the determination of a mixture of different metal ions in a solution. So basically this complexometric titration is mainly used for the determination of metal ions. So what's the principle behind this complexometric titration? In complexometric titration, the metal ions are titrated with complexing or chelating agents or we can say ligand as I said before we're going to determine metallic metal ions so uh, the titrant will be also named as complexing or chelating agents or we can say ligand so a complexing agent is any electron donating ion or molecule called ligand which forms one or more covalent or coordinate bonds with the metal ions producing a complex which have different properties from those of the free metal. So this metal ion will complex with the titrant that is the ligand and form the complex at the end point. That is the basic principle behind this complexometric titration. So you can see here the metal ion that is analyte reacts with the ligand that's a titrant to form a complex ion or we can say a chelate is formed. Complexometric titrations involve the disappearance of the free metal ion as they are changed into complex ions. Next is classification of complexometric titrations. There are different types of complexometric titrations and they are the first one is direct titration, second is back titration, then replacement or substitution titration, then indirect titration, alkalimetric titrations and miscellaneous methods. These are the main um, categories of complexometric titration. So now we will, we will see each titrations in detail so first one is direct titration so among the all the complexometric titrations this is the simplest one so this is the simplest and most convenient method in which the metal ions in a solution is buffered to the desired pH so why we are buffering this solution because we need to maintain the pH in complexometric titrations that's the reason why we are buffering the solution and this metal ions are then titrated directly with a standard EDTA solution. That means here the ligand or we can say the titrant is a standard EDTA solution. So here it is shown with the help of a diagram. So here is a metal ion shown with the red color. This is a metal ion and it is then directly titrated with EDTA and uh, we will get a metal EDTA complex at the end point. So the metal ion plus buffer, buffer we are adding to adding because we need to maintain the pH in complexometry and we are adding an indicator. So in usually in direct titration we will be adding an in indicator named ereochrome black T and it is then titrated with EDTA solution. 
So at the equivalence point, the concentration of the metal ion decreases abruptly because most of the metal ions will react with a ligand. And it is then determined by the color change in the color of the metal indicators like aerochrome black T. So uh, in complexometry, the precipitation of metal hydroxides um, is prevented by adding some auxiliary complexing agents like tartrate or citrate. And one example of this direct titration in complexometry is uh, finding the total hardness of water. That is, the water is water hardness is because of the presence of calcium and magnesium ions. So it is determined by direct titration with EDTA using rheochrome black T as an indicator. So here we have to maintain the pH at 10. For this, we need to add a buffer that is ammonia. Ammonia chloride buffer is used to maintain the pH 10. So the next method in complexometry is a back titration. So a direct titration of metal ion in a solution is not always possible. So there lies the importance of back titration. So when the direct titration is not possible for metal ions to determine, we will be following this back titration method. So why this direct method is not possible? Because the metal ion may precipitate from the solution in a pH range necessary for the titration. That's the first reason. And then another reason is when a suitable indicator is not available because of these two reasons direct titration may not be possible so in those conditions we'll be following back titration so what is back titration in back titration we'll be adding an excess of standard edta solution the resulting solution is buffered to the desired ph and then the excess of the EDTA solution is back titrated with standard metal ion solutions like zinc chloride, zinc sulfate, magnesium sulfate, etc. And the endpoint is detected with a metal ion indicator which responds to the metal ion introduced in back titration. So we'll explain this back titration process with the help of a diagram that is the sample metal ion that is M1 to be determined and EDTA solution. So in back titration, we'll be adding excess of EDTA solution and this EDTA solution will be reacted with this metal ion and a complex will be formed. That is M1 EDTA complex. As we added excess of EDTA solution, the unreacted standard EDTA solution will be back titrated with the metal ion 2. That is shown with this purple color. That is the excess of EDTA solution. The unreacted EDTA solution will be back titrated with standard metal ions like zinc chloride and will be getting another complex that is M2 EDTA complex. So the third type of complexometric titration is replacement or substitution titration. So in this method, a weak EDTA complex of another metal ion that is M2 is added to the solution of metal ion to be determined that is M1. The replacement or substitution titrations are mainly used for metal ions which react unsatisfactorily with a metal indicator. So the metal ion to be determined is treated with magnesium EDTA complex and the reaction is as follows. So here in this reaction the metal to be determined is calcium. So we are adding this metal ion to be determined that is calcium to a complex that is magnesium EDTA complex. So this calcium will replace this magnesium and forms the complex that is calcium EDTA complex and there will be free magnesium and this free magnesium will again complex with EDTA and a magnesium EDTA complex will be formed. So in this titration the amount of magnesium liberated is equivalent to the calcium present and it can be titrated with standard EDTA solution using a metal ion indicator. So example, 
in the direct titration of calcium using rheochrome black t as an indicator gets a poor endpoint so that's the reason why we are following a replacement titration so but if magnesium ions are present as magnesium edta complex the magnesium ions are displaced from the edta complex by the calcium and a better endpoint results this displacement takes place because calcium forms a more stable complex with edta since calcium has a more affinity for edta this calcium will displace magnesium from this magnesium edta complex and the calcium will form a complex with edta so the amount of magnesium displaced will be equivalent to the amount of calcium present in the solution that's the basic principle of displacement titration so it is represented with the help of a diagram that is a sample metal ion m1 that is added to a complex that is a weak metal edta complex since the bonding between edta and the metal is weak this metal ion m1 will be replacing this m2 and a strong metal edta complex will be formed and this replaced free metal ion m2 will be titrated against standard edta solution and again a m2 complex will be formed so the next method is an alkylimetric titration so in this when a solution of edta is added to a solution containing metal ions complexes are formed with a liberation of equivalent amount of hydrogen so this liberated ions can be titrated with standard solution of sodium hydroxide using acid base indicator or we can say ph indicator the solution of metal ion to be determined should be accurately neutralized before titration a perfect alkylimetric titration is not possible because of the hydrolysis of many salts occurring during the titration as a result of ph change so here instead of a pm indicator or we can say metal ion indicator we are using a ph indicator because here there will be a liberation of h plus ions and we are titrating this h plus ions using sodium hydroxide so it is shown with the help of a diagram that is a sample metal ion it is then titrated with the standard edta and metal edta complex will be formed with the liberation of h plus ions so since this h plus ions are formed it is then titrated using an alkali that is sodium hydroxide that is standard alkali solution using acid base indicator and uh, acid base titration product will be formed so the last titration complexometry that is indirect titration and this method is used to determine ions such as halides phosphates and sulfates that do not form a complex with edta in the determination of sulfate ion the sulfate ion in the solution is treated with excess of standard solution of barium ion the precipitate formed that is barium sulfate is filtered and the unreacted barium ions present is titrated with edta so in this way we'll be able to determine indirectly the amount of sulfate ion present in the sample solution so in this method we are use this method to determine halides phosphates and sulfates so it can be better explained with the help of a diagram so here we can see the sulfate ions the sulfate ions are then titrated with excess of barium solution so a precipitate will be formed that is barium sulfate and it is filtered off and then the unreacted barium is then titrated with a standard edta solution and a barium edta complex will be formed so this is indirect titration process